Okay, so this is what we're going to be talking about today um, with uh, Cora and Jen. So Cora is the Senior Project Manager for Fishwise's Social Responsibility Team, um, as which she has led the development of the RISE platform, which is a great example of Fishwise's commitment to developing guidance to support the seafood industry's efforts to address human and labor rights issues in seafood supply chains, and her colleague Jen Cole. As project director for the social responsibility team, Jen leads much of Fishwise's social responsibility work with business partners through collaboration, research, and the development of initiatives to improve practices that protect human and labor rights within the seafood industry. And fortunately, that's it for my brief presentation. I'm now going to hand over to Cora and Jen um, uh, to give their presentation. So thank you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat box and um, we'll answer them at the end. Over to you guys. Great, thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you for your introductions and thanks to Sea Choice for having us. My name's Cora Sorensen. I am a senior project manager here with my colleague Jen Cole, who's a social responsibility project director. And we're looking forward to sharing with you how to build a comprehensive social responsibility program and how our platform at Fishwise called RISE, which stands for Roadmap for Improving Seafood Ethics, can help companies to make those improvements. Today, we will talk about why companies should work on social responsibility in the first place, what approaches you can use to build a program, how the RISE platform can provide the guidance to help you achieve that, and some concrete, tangible next steps you can take. But first, a little bit about us at Fishwise. For more than 15 years, Fishwise has worked closely with the seafood industry to foster leadership and sustainability. We have a, about a decade of history working with companies as an environmental seafood consultancy. And in the past three to four years, our work has expanded into social responsibility to um, be able to meet and to support the seafood industry's increasing need to address human rights, which I'm sure you're all at this point very well aware of. So how do we work? We further knowledge in the field by translating scientific information into practical recommendations for a range of seafood stakeholders. We also build multi-stakeholder collaborations where we convene government, industry, nonprofit organizations, and we can create new strategies to improve traceability and combat, and combat human rights abuses. And we serve as a go-to resource for best practices, tools, and approaches that are recommended by, by a, a diverse, um, diverse group of experts in the field, including human and social experts. And we'll be talking about an example of that, which is RISE today. But very importantly for our conversation today is our work to advance private sector leadership in sustainability and social responsibility. We partner with the seafood industry to achieve some of the most ambitious, responsible seafood commitments, including to socially responsible seafood. And currently, this includes our partnerships with Albertsons Companies, Target Corporation, and Hy-Vee, along with independent grocery stores and many mid-supply mid chain income producer companies. All right, um, this is Jen here. So Cora and I are gonna be doing a little bit of an Abbott and Costello today, uh, trading back and forth between slides. So as Cora just mentioned, uh, Fishwise works with really a range of different companies and organizations throughout the seafood supply chain uh, and throughout the seafood sector. Um, some of them are displayed here on the screen and that includes uh, our retail partners, some mid supply chain partners, producers, as well as hospitality, and then those external stakeholders and collaborations in which we sit in. And partnering or participating in any, all of these groups really help give us a perspective on the many nodes of seafood supply chains and the improvements that have to happen within each. And as Cora also mentioned, Fishwise has been working on 
social responsibility in the seafood industry for over four years now. And actually this year, 2019, kind of marks really the emergence of the public knowledge of human rights abuses in seafood supply chains. So about five years ago, the Guardian article um, launched, which talked about uh, human rights abuses in shrimp supply chains. And so, you know, we were working with many of these partners that we had listed five years ago when these abuses came out. And over the past five years, as we've worked with these many companies within seafood supply chains and their own supply chains, so their suppliers and their vendors, um, we identified this need for a clear kind of step-by-step -step free guidance for improving social responsibility within a company's seafood supply chains. And we created RISE, um, the Roadmap for Improving Seafood Ethics, to really meet that need. And the RISE homepage is displayed here on the screen, and you can also visit it on riseseafood.org. And today we're going to be going through a little bit of why we work on social responsibility and what RISE can provide a company who's interested in either advancing their existing social responsibility program or starting a new one. So the seafood industry, like many industries, was kind of brought into social responsibility and human rights by force. Um, and when I say by force, what I mean is that uh, these improvements and this need to work on human rights really began because of um, media stories about human rights abuses or scandals that were occurring in our own supply chains. So when companies began to work on social responsibility, it was to manage that brand reputation and operational risk, as well as obviously improve conditions for workers that were mentioned in these stories um, or that might just be existing in our global supply chains. Um, overall. However, social responsibility improvements come with a suite of other benefits and some of these are the stakeholder relationships that are formed as you're working on these really challenging issues in our global supply chains, the communications and due diligence that is required to really robustly work on social responsibility can help to strengthen the practices in your supply chains. All of these improvements um, when shared out, help to demonstrate leadership as a company. And finally, there are a lot of international standards and national laws related to human rights that a company and an organization needs to be compliant with. And that is actually a trickier area to navigate than you might think, um, really staying within the law on social responsibility. And that's because there's been a range of acts and laws in the past five to six years that have been focused on human rights more broadly. And so these laws include disclosure acts. So what are you required to do um, to share out what's happening in your social uh, in your seafood supply chains? And then there's also enforcement acts. So the US is a great example of this, um, where there are laws specifically prohibiting U.S. importers from bringing products pr uh, produced by forced labor into the U.S. Um, market. And in order to navigate uh, these many laws and international standards on human rights, one of the RISE pages, Social Issues in Seafood, um, has a box that links you to many of these human rights and labor standards and international frameworks. So as a company, you can click on that box and really understand um, where you might need to be compliant. And so it lists laws that are in France, um, the Netherlands, US, Canada, and this is something that we're constantly building out and fleshing out um, as these new laws come into effect. And so on this page, this is really a resource page, there's both the laws and frameworks, um, but there's also a few other links and resources that we've provided. So one is defining social responsibility in the seafood industry. And we've used the Monterey framework, which FishWise is a part of developing, and it was also led by Conservation International. And this framework really um, uses FAO guidance and the guidance of other international standards 
to create um, a comprehensive definition for what social responsibility means for seafood in particular. Uh, we have more information on legality and compliance as a company, um, how social responsibility links to other important issues in seafood like illegal fishing, um, and then we have a few definitions and explanations. Really, if you're just starting to work on human rights, there are a lot of terms that you'll encounter. And so for um, someone who's beginning to work on this, we've provided those terms as well. And so this is a great resource page, but we also understand that this information needs to translate into action. And this action has to do with what a retailer or supplier can do um, when they're starting to work on human rights. And really, uh, as a company, when you begin to work on human rights, um, your actions usually begin in this traditional due diligence approach. And so what this due diligence approach uh, consists of are different steps for setting and communicating expectations, assessing risk and verifying conditions in your supply chains, and improving traceability and data collection. However, the traditional due diligence approach is a bit of a challenging place from which to drive change. And the reason that the traditional due diligence approach is challenging is because it's a response to risks that are faced by seafood companies. Um, so some of the risks that a company might face are reputational, the media stories um, that we just mentioned, as well as NGO campaigns. There are also the legal risks, which the rise um, social issues and seafood page can help a company to navigate. Then there are just operational risks to things like limited traceability into your supply chains. Um, and that limited traceability corresponds to a huge unknown for a company. And so this traditional due diligence approach is really useful and effective as you're beginning to mitigate some of the risks that we have displayed here on the screen. However, uh, Fishwise also advocates for a more proactive approach. And what we call this more proactive approach is ethical supply chain management. Because your traditional due diligence helps address some of the risks that I just mentioned, but its success actually varies a little bit when it comes to moving beyond compliance and actually improving the lives of people and supply chains and improving the lives and conditions of workers and supply chains is what really needs to happen in order to uh, close the loop on managing these risks, right? So what does ethical supply chain management mean? What ethical supply chain management means is that the practices of a company's supply chains center around a worker they involve workers very closely. And if an issue should arise, um, there's remediation for workers and their grievances. And what we've done with the RISE page, recognizing the value of a more traditional due diligence approach um, and also the need for more ethical supply chain management, is from the RISE platform, what we've done is uh, provide guidance that helps companies identify that legal floor. Um, so what do you need to do as a company to meet uh, human rights laws um, and put in place traditional due diligence steps? And we also provide guidance to bridge that gap from the legal floor um, what you're required to do, and that ethical ceiling. So those more proactive improvements that improve conditions on the ground for workers. And that's really that better goal is to exist between the legal floor and the ethical ceiling and to work towards always meeting that ethical ceiling. And the reason why this is a better approach for a company is because the legal floor continues to rise. Um, there are more and more laws that help a company move from purely disclosure of what it's doing to human rights towards this more enforcement act. Uh, and so as the legal floor continues to rise, to stay ahead of that legal floor, 
um, a company will need to integrate some of these ethical supply chain steps uh, in order to kind of stay ahead of the curve and to continue to promote its social responsibility program um, is one that is effective. And so with that, I'll hand it over to Cora to share a little bit more about the RISE platform itself and what's provided on the platform. Great, thanks, Jen. So we've spent some time outlining these two approaches, this traditional due diligence approach and talking about how to go beyond that, go beyond compliance um, to the ethical management approach. So the, ne the next question is, what are the actual action steps to implement both of these approaches, both the due diligence, legal compliance, and ethical management. So we're gonna spend the rest of our time outlining some of these steps. But just a little bit of context around the development of the RISE platform. Um, Fishwise, we've been working with industry for over a decade, and we've really heard, especially over the last year, um, from seafood companies about, an, about the need for some really clear guidance and actionable recommendations. Um, for social responsibility um, and human, human and labor rights issues. So we designed this platform to meet this need. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation, RISE is an acronym. It stands for Roadmap for Improving Seafood Ethics. Jen showed you the, uh, the landing page um, a little bit earlier. And essentially, it's a one-stop shop for companies. So it's the audiences for the seafood industry and it makes um, a wide breadth of social responsibility guidance, tools, resources developed by a variety of experts, not just fishwise, but really a calling of um, curated materials that exist and have been developed by NGOs, by the government, by um, intergovernmental agencies, and the seafood industry as well, available really at your fingertips. So regardless of where you're at in your journey, um, there's, a, there's guidance for a variety of topics. And um, yeah, I wanted to say that uh, we have developed these recommendations for essentially the two audiences that, the two kind of target audiences that exist in seafood supply chains. So with the help of social experts, we had a lot of conversations on how to, um, how to structure these recommendations. So on the RISE platform, we have recommendations that are directly targeted for buyers and directly targeted for employers. And we've provided on this slide some examples of um, along the supply chain where that particular uh, actor would fall, whether it would be a buyer or employer. And um, a buyer, as a buyer, the company's role is really to be considering the risks and ensuring compliance with upstream or downstream business operations. And as an employer, the company's role is to manage human rights and labor conditions in their own supply chains. And at different points in the supply chain, a company might find itself as a buyer, you know, sometimes in other points as an employer. So those recommendations sometimes are um, across both. So in this roadmap, we've structured our guidance into three themes, which you can see here along the bottom. Um, we have all the activities that go into evaluating and monitoring supply chains, um, including monitoring compliance with company policies. In the middle, we have information on how companies improve supply chain practices to support workers and prevent labor exploitation. And lastly, on the right, we um, have, have a, a bucket of guidance that's on how companies communicate both internally within their supply chains about expectations and policies as well as externally, uh, how to communicate about successes and progress to the public and consumers. And uh, <clears throat> this is, you know, my attempt to capture a little bit of what a live web website would show you, which this is a static representation, unfortunately, but if you kind of linger over any of these, you, you have a yellow box that pops up that shows you um, what the specific big actionable steps are within that guidance bucket to help help you think about where you want to dip in. So within each of these buckets, we have um, a variety of guidance steps and the guidance contains an action step for buyers and employers. In this particular one, um, the buyer and employer step is the same, but in others they'll be divided into different steps. 
We have then additional supporting guidance, which would include, as you can see here, a reference to, um, to an external consultancy, a, perhaps a social or labor um, expert and their developed materials. Um, this is an example of a Verite, a document um, with guidance on how to conduct migrant worker interviews. And we also have additional, um, a variety of additional resources to help implement these recommendations. So two of the themes in these buckets are associated with what Jen was talking about earlier with this legal compliance, traditional due diligence approach. So two of the RISE buckets are directed at traditional due diligence, evaluate and monitor and communicate. And under evaluate and monitor, um, you'll find guidance on how to implement traceability in your supply chains. And those traceability practices help you to collect data, not only on seafood products, but also on the working conditions of seafood workers. And this data then allows a company to assess risk for potential rights violations. And companies also need to establish processes to verify that legal conditions are being upheld. So each of these bullet points under the headings here represents one of the action steps in RISE. Um, and as I was showing on the last slide, for each of those action steps, there's associated guidance tools and resources. So there's a lot of rich and comprehensive material on RISE. Unfortunately, we don't have time or, or the interface really to walk you through the platform live itself. So um, I just, in place of that, I wanna share with you an example of some of the content and the learnings that you would find specifically in this verify condition step. Um, in a conversation, kind of some of the, the knowledge and the awareness that you would gain if you were looking at that step. So traditionally, um, to, to determine compliance for environmental sustainability, as you're very aware, companies use um, the tool of an audit. So it's, it's a really logical next step, that is companies are seeking to mitigate human rights risks that a business would turn to social audits. And this is a good step for many companies, and if they're done properly, audits can help to surface problems. Um, however, what we have really learned um, through our network of uh, human and labor rights experts and folks working directly with workers on the ground is that these social audits um, can have limitations and they're not a silver bullet. The reason that this is the case is that there's a wide variability in quality, in training, in standards around social audits. The results don't always capture the whole picture. And what we hear often is that workers may lack trust in the auditors and therefore not really share what um, working conditions they're experiencing. So it's really important that if a company is using social audits, um, that they make sure that it's conducted according to best practices. And so, for example, in this, um, in this step, we provide a lot of discussion around this topic. We provide best practices and social audits that are outlined by consultancies with direct experience working with businesses in social auditing. Um, provide all of that information in this section. And we also explain how audits fit into a larger picture as one tool for due diligence, but that there's other ways to verify supply chain practices. So shifting to the communicate guidance bucket, um, in this section you'd find templates on how to draft um, a public social responsibility commitment, how to communicate expectations along your supply chain, including sample codes of conduct, templates for codes of conduct, how to internally track and externally report on your progress. So a lot of times this traditional due diligence um, approach can be challenging to implement for suppliers specifically, or this doesn't get implemented through the tiers of the supply chain um, to take effect on the ground or on the water. And that's why we provide adaptive information that helps companies to engage with workers more directly. And this is in the improve guidance bucket. So in this bucket, we share on how to determine um, effective grievance mechanisms and how to remediate abuses if they're found in your supply chains, how to improve conditions of workers, how and who to connect with to make sure that your workers are being sourced through ethical agencies and channels, 
and how to build capacity in your supply chains to support these improvements. I spoke about social audits just a moment ago. So let me give you a concrete example of a company that's gone beyond social audits to um, improve and engage workers and really illustrate a lot of what this ethical supply chain management process might look like. So after encountering the, the limitations of social audit approach, um, including cost, frequency of auditing, um, Bali Seafood International, which is a subsidiary of North Atlantic Incorporated, identified the opportunity to instead develop worker-centric improvements through collective bargaining agreements. So through its workplace agreements for ethical seafood, which they call their Ways program, um, Bali Seafood um, provides an alternative to social audits in their fishery supply chains by using this collective bargaining agreement um, as a worker-driven tool for making improvements and they strive for, for improvement over the long term. So this just wanted to give you an example of, of um, how a company might actually implement what that might look like in their supply chains. Um, but again, there's a tremendous depth um, and wealth of guidance and uh, um, collection of tools and resources that can help you to dig into every one of these steps. Um, and so we really hope that you will um, take a look at the, the platform um, when you have time. And of course, we're here to answer any questions, but um, I'm going to turn it back to Jen to continue to share on how you can build a social responsibility program. Thanks, Cora, for walking us through the different kind of umbrella buckets of steps RISE has, so the evaluate and monitor, improve and communicate, and the different kind of sub steps that are included underneath. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what implementing those steps actually looks like in practice because we recognize that as a company, uh, so RISE has quite a few steps, but as a company, as you're building a social responsibility program, um, we know that you'll have to balance some of the, what I like to call practical actions. So those immediate steps that are really helpful in you know, addressing short-term needs with something that I call you know, your more strategic actions. And this is your social responsibility vision for your company and the longer term steps and that longer term plan or roadmap that it would take you to get there. So when you're thinking your strategic vision for a company's social responsibility program, it's pretty big. Um, <laughs> it includes a lot of work uh, and quite a few steps. So I have right now a snapshot of what some of those steps might look like on the screen, but this is not an exhaustive list. Um, building a comprehensive social responsibility program or supply chain management program um, does take quite a bit of time and work. Um, and it includes, you know, on the evaluating and monitoring side, things like mapping your supply chains, uh, if you're a North American retailer or vendor, this isn't necessarily an easy task to go beyond tier one or tier two in your supply chains. Um, it's also not simple to always be collecting human rights data. Uh, you know, once that human rights data is collected, one of the next steps for evaluating and monitoring is conducting a risk assessment of that data to kind of uh, identify some higher risk supply chains for improvements and then conducting or requesting verification uh, to determine compliance on some of those higher risk supply chains or suppliers. Um, communicating is also a big job in and of itself and I know um, it can be really challenging to work with communications teams and legal teams to identify what steps a company is comfortable sharing out about and identifying different challenges or improvements a company has faced and sharing them with the space. Um, another key part of communication, especially if you're further downstream, is working with suppliers to identify and communicate around what expectations um, you have for them and their own supply chains. 
And improve, this last bucket, is of course the biggest one because improve is that area that as Cora talked about, really focuses more on um, ethical supply chain management. And the improve bucket isn't just about improvements to your own supply chains, but improvements that really strengthen the seafood sector as a whole and seafood supply chains globally. Um, so that strategic vision for what you as a company might want to do um, to develop your ideal social responsibility program, that includes quite a bit. Uh, and recognizing that, we have a few actions that you might take today to kind of break down that huge strategic vision into some of these more practical steps um, that can help point you towards, you know, maybe even just identifying a strategic vision for social responsibility for your seafood. And so some of the actions that we have here are talking to your colleagues. Um, some of the most impactful companies when it comes to making social responsibility improvements or having those improvements recognized um, have company buy-in for that social responsibility and it's embedded into the ethos of the company. So um, I would say getting senior leadership buy-in or C-suite buy-in is a really crucial step if you've identified as a company that social responsibility is something that you want to promote within your supply chains and also with your consumers. Um, you know, so talking with your colleagues and identifying that vision is kind of talking the talk, right? Uh, but in order to walk the walk, you need partners to help you do that. And the most important partner for a company is their suppliers and their supply chain. Um, so working really closely with key suppliers to identify improvements, um, identify, uh, you know, maybe action plans um, should violations occur. Um, and continuing to check in with suppliers um, to make those improvements happen. So uh, the final piece that I have is finding a partner. You know, Fishwise, we're a sustainable seafood consultancy. We work with many other sustainable seafood consultancies who are partnered with companies. We also work with many human rights consultancies who are also partnered with companies and a partner. Um, can really provide some expertise that you either don't have the capacity to build in-house or don't have the desire or need to build in-house. So breaking down those steps, you know, talk to a colleague of yours if you have access to senior leadership, uh, talk to a senior leadership me um, staff member about what improvements or goals they might have for social responsibility. Uh, share expectations with a supplier or maybe even talk to your legal team about what expectations um, exist for your suppliers. And finally, um, you know, schedule a call with a partner, Sea Choice, Fishwise, others, um, to determine what gaps you might have and how to meet them. Recognizing that uh, you know, there are quite a few players in the seafood sector. Um, Fishwise also has on rise uh, something called the Referral Hub. And what the Referral Hub does is help to connect companies to organizations who are working on the ground or consultants. And the goal of this Referral Hub is to help you um, find partners. You know, it doesn't have to be us. It can be really, you know, any, every single company who's listed in the referral hub um, is a strong organization working to improve social responsibility in the seafood sector. So finding one of those companies or organizations and reaching out to them about what your next steps could be. And really just to sum up what Cora and I have shared today, social responsibility, is good for your business and for strengthening the practices of your own supply chain. Um, to go even further on strengthening your supply chain practices and improving conditions for workers, integrating more ethical supply chain management into due diligence practices is pretty essential. And that ethical supply chain management, those steps, 
um, those are listed on RISE and RISE has guidance for what you as a company can do for evaluating and monitoring your supply chains, improving uh, and communicating about the improvements that you've made. And because that work really cannot happen alone. Um, we again have this next step for you to talk to your team or a partner about how to better integrate social responsibility um, into your own company's practices or how to improve the existing social responsibility practices that you might have. So with that, um, please feel free to contact us. Uh, we have our emails listed here and also visit riseseafood.org. I think with that, I'll open it up for questions and hand it back to Leanne to um, manage. Thank you so much, Jen and Cora, for that. Um, I found it really interesting. Um, I've looked on the RISE uh, website a few times now. There really is a wealth of information and it's laid out um, in a way that is really makes sense to walk you through the different steps and make it maybe a little bit more approachable in terms of getting started. Um, so I just wanted to open it to the floor, uh, the virtual floor. If anyone has questions, I think you can raise your hands or send a message. And if no one has questions right now, um, feel free to get in touch with myself or with Jen or Cora afterwards and we'd be more than happy to um, to try and answer them. Um, we did record this session and we will be sending it out to all invitees to this uh, webinar because there were some people who wanted to attend but weren't able to for scheduling reasons. Um, so you can send it on to colleagues who maybe weren't able to join. Um, or just use it to refer back to if you if that works for you and yeah if there's no questions thank you again to Jen and Cora and thank you to everyone who um, who joined us I hope you found it interesting <laughs>